hi guys respect welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing okay it's a nice time to be here um in this video today i want to tell you or bring to your notice 10 things you need to take with you to canada if you want to reduce your expenses yes and i will tell you why these things are 10 because i realized that when some people went to canada some items some things they could have easily bought back home maybe cheaper because of the currency exchange rates they were left with no choice than to buy these things in Canada. And by so doing, the money they went there with finished before the time they were expected. So I wouldn't want you guys to make the same mistake, which is why I am compiling or I have compiled these 10 things you need to go to Canada with if you want to minimize your spending so for those of you coming across my channel for the very first time my name is nosa comedy i'm the man with the remedy many of my fans from all over the world coming nosa from the source and i'm the king of informative comedy right here in the united states of america pew, pew, pew. so like i've always said we are still in the canada season the reason why i call it the canada season is that visa the tourist visa is flying left right up down and center so that's why i call it the canada season so um today please support me by sharing this video give this video a thumbs up so that youtube can recommend this video to others and please don't forget to click the notification bell so that whenever i drop a new video you'll be the first to be notified um so Number one on the list of these 10 things you have to go to Canada with if you don't want to spend money anyhow. And I will give you reasons. One, go with your government IDs. That is ID cards. Whatever ID cards you have, go with them. They are very, very important. For example, or for instance, as a visitor, you can open a bank account in Canada. Trust me. And in most cases, your passport or visa is not just enough. They will need another ID from your country. So this is why you have to go with your ids because this will enable you open a bank account from my research yes so that is very very that is very very important and by so doing when it comes when it comes to this opening of bank account i will also advise you guys if you already have your visa you can start this bank opening process from your countries. Yes. Check out the banks in Canada. Go online. Check what is needed to open an account with any of these banks. So you can start the process from your countries before you go to Canada. So that when you arrive, you just complete your registration with the bank. So that is why we advise go with your ids any of your all your government ids you can go with them it's very very important because things may come up that require you to show an id you understand and also the the passport passport is very very important too but you see these id cards i'm asking you you will need them to support the documents you have when it comes to opening a bank account in Canada. One. 
two clothes. See, right now is summer, December, January, February, March, maybe towards April. It's winter. See, the reason why you will have to go with maybe enough clothes is that you don't want to be buying these clothes there. Because if you check your country's exchange rates, you will realize that, okay, just imagine like this shirt I'm wearing. Right here in the US, this shirt was bought with about $56. Yes, this shirt I'm just wearing like this, about $56. It's not even the most expensive. It's one of the cheapest. And if you convert this money to my country's currency, I think this with the current exchange rate is over 50k, over 50,000 naira for this shirt I'm wearing. So imagine going to Canada and buying a shirt for like 40, 30, 50, 60 dollars, or even 20 dollars. So know when you are coming here, try to know the season. If you are coming during summer, you will have to come with a lot of short sleeves because the weather is kind of warm. So you can't be coming here during summer, you'll be coming with thick, thick jackets, thick, thick coats. Trust me, you, don't, you can't wear that. If you are coming during winter, you can come with thick, thick clothes too. And during winter, you cannot be wearing, during winter, me, I, cannot wear this, I cannot wear this outside though. Me, I cannot. I will see. Hmm. The I don't want to froze. That is why I cannot wear this out during winter. It's because it's summer. That's why I'm wearing this. So you have to go. You have to go with the clothes that aligns with the weather in Canada. You understand? So that is very very important. Shoes. You don't have to pack many shoes because you are trying as much as possible to reduce the things you are carrying. And also, there are some kind of shoes you will need to wear during winter. They have summer shoes, they have winter shoes. So you have to know when you are going there. Let's say you are going there between now and uh, maybe September or October. You can still be wearing this. And if it's during winter, see, there are thick, thick boots, shoes we have to be wearing. If not, your leg will freeze. So number three is, no, number, number three is shoes. So number four, good phone. Good phone and charger. Good phone and charger, this one is very, very important. Don't make the mistake. Let me give you an example. Let me tell you a short story for a, for a minute. The first time I came to the US, I could remember I had a phone, I had a tab, and because it was a browsing phone, I was able to connect to Wi Fi. When I was in Dubai, I connected to Wi Fi. You understand? When I was in Milan, I connected to Wi Fi. Because the Wi Fi there, connected to Wi Fi, enabled me to communicate with my family. Even when I was on my way here, through the Wi Fi, my people, even my, my, my family would even reach out to me. Because there is no network, I will not get any message. As soon as I get to the airport, I will just connect to the airport Wi-Fi. I will see messages coming. I was able to communicate with my family while I was inside the airport, connected to the airport's Wi-Fi. So it is very, very important to travel with a very good phone. Not bang, 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 not bang, bang. Go with better phone, buy better phone. Better phone. Shabe, better phone. I'm emphasizing. Go with charger too. Let me show you this charger. This is my iPhone charger. Right here in the US, this charger, I just bought this charger not too long ago for $22. Trust me, iPhone charger. 
if you convert $22 in Nigerian currency right now, $22 to the Naira, that is about 20,000 Naira for charger. In Nigeria, I cannot buy a charger 5,000. But this charger is $22. And also, when you have this phone, try to put your phone on roaming. Because when your phone is on roaming, whenever you go to other countries, your phone connects to any available network or any network provider that will allow you browse, test, and call. So that is four. Number five, you can go with your laptop and charger. It's not like this one is super compulsory, though. But you can go with it. It is important. You understand? Sorry. Because there can be some website that you may not be able to open well on phone. You can be using your laptop. And also, you, can, also, you have to go with your laptop chargers as well. You understand? Because laptop chargers are very, very expensive here in America. The same thing in Canada. Because the reason why I'm saying these things, I want to make sure that you are able to reduce your spending. There are many things you can buy on a chip in your country because of the exchange rates. If you go to other, if you go to that Canada, I want to buy those things. Trust me, your hand will be going deeper into your finance, and you don't want to run out of cash. So number five, go laptop and charger. Number six. Treat yourself very well before you leave your country. This one is very, very important. Because to see a doctor in Canada without treatment, without x-ray, without scan, it can, it can cost you up to six, seven, eight hundred dollars See, just to see doctor can cost you as high as six hundred dollars that is why people go with health insurance when they are going to foreign countries so please treat yourself properly don't be in a hurry say eh, maybe you have one small sickness you just feel like let me just manage this sickness and let me just manage it i will just see if you hook there you will be amazed that the small money you went there with that you are saving you will have to take like maybe one thousand dollars inside to treat yourself see doctor and treat yourself in most cases it will even be more than just imagine you are living home spending one thousand five hundred dollars to take care of yourself in canada and you don't even have too much money with you which means in no distant time you will be stranded so please treat yourself properly before you leave home that is a six Number seven, put lock and keys on your luggage. Because when you are traveling, um, for those of you who have not traveled via plane, when you are traveling, there is this luggage, there is a um, backpack you can carry. Then there is this, normally, for those of you carrying buses, do we have to check that buses? Those buses will have to be checked in. So you will check them in. You will not, you will not carry that bus to the plane. You will just check them in somewhere. Uh -huh. Maybe they will have other planes that will take them to Canada for you or it can follow the same plane as well. I don't know how they, they say, many ways they do it. So that your luggage that you will be checking in because that one, you will not be carrying that luggage with you. Because there is a certain weight you cannot bring it to the plane. So that is why those luggages are checked in. And from the way things are happening, the world is changing. There is a story I heard about a lady in, uh, I think the thing, happened, the, something, the thing happened in one of the countries in Europe. People put, people put something, people put um, something in the woman's bag, drugs. She didn't know. And she was caught. 
and she says she's innocent. So you don't want anybody to set you up. You don't want village people to follow you. So that bag you are checking in, don't just zip it. Zip it, put that lock, hold your key. And if you are going to this Canada, somebody say, hey, help me to take this thing to my person there. If that thing is it's something you cannot open and see for yourself, don't carry. Because in the last, last year, this year, we have seen cases where somebody carried something from somebody, said, take this thing, let me to give my family when you get there. The person took it, got to airport, they opened it. It was drugs. It was innocent. They didn't know. There was another one. They gave the guy something to carry to, to deliver to somebody that way. The guy just felt like opening it. It was Sanders. Inside the Sanders, between the sole, inside the sole, they put drugs. May God not let us see bad things. What would you say? What would you do? So please be careful. That is, um, that is, um, which one is that? That is number seven. Number eight, if you cannot cut your hair, but if you cannot cut or barber, please try, learn how to cut and barb, even if it's yourself. You know why? This is what I was doing when I nearly came here to the US. Cutting hair. Is thirty-five dollars, thirty dollars where, where I was. So I was like, if I if I'm cutting my hair twice a week, I will be. I, no, sorry, if I'm cutting my hair twice a month, I will be spending how much? About seventy dollars, at least sixty dollars. I said no, me I don't I can I cannot be spending that much. That money is too much. Now I will not take um clipper. Or bleed, I will learn how to shave myself, like all these lines. That was what I was doing way back when I nearly came here, not now. Sometimes I still do it because I used to barb. I used to cut hair way back in Nigeria. So I used to manage barber salon for a barber salon for someone. I was in charge of a barber shop at the time, so I can cut. So you have to learn this will help you minimize your money. You understand? So, even if it's just to try, learn her before you move, learn her to lie. Your hair can be many, but at least this line is fine. <laughs> you don't have a problem. You can decide to be cutting your hair once in a month. But at least when, after cutting, when those things is, when it's becoming bushy, you can be able to give yourself those lines. <laughs> learn that one, very, very important. This will help you with life spending. Imagine if you are to be spending sixty to seventy dollars a month on Barbie, you are spending like twenty or twenty-five, thirty. This will help you minimize. Very, very important. At least you can shave yourself. <laughs> so number nine, open dollar accounts in your countries. This is very, very important, so that you can be doing dollar transactions online. And make sure your dollar online transaction account is working. This one, very, very important. Don't, it cannot be overemphasized, the importance. So, number 10, have basic skills. When I say have basic survival skills, if you rent a house, do you know that to fix Lampoda for bulb? If you call an electrician, you can pay up to $40 just to fix Lampoda. Many of us, we are able to do this back home. These are some of the, you will need to learn all these things because if you have an apartment, you don't want to be spending unnecessary money. You don't, see, I am telling you, you don't want to be spending unnecessary money. Then, okay, just imagine like to tie screw. Somebody can even see, somebody can even call you. People are even using it to make money here in America. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to couple a cupboard or a wardrobe. 
you want to lose the screw or tie the screw, you will call somebody to come and do it. Me, I will be like, ah, this thing, me, I can do it too. At the end of the day, somebody will be taking $100 just to tie screw. He came with only screwdriver, just screw work, $100. All these are basic skills. We call them basic survival skills you need to learn. If you are at home, your sink, maybe after renting an apartment, your sink now block, what will you do? You will call a plumber. Before you know, they call it like $150 for your hand, $150, at least $100 or $200. Do you want to be spending this unnecessary money? So try to have a, try to ask for some more idea in all those things. Even if you don't have, even if these are not what you have certifications in, just at least have an idea so that you can be doing these things for yourself when the need arises. There is no need for you to be calling other people and spending this small money you carried to that place. So, these 10 things, try to have them, try to do them to reduce your spending. So, till I see you in my next video, please give this video a fat thumbs up and also. Make sure you subscribe. Till I see you in my next video. Respect.